where in the heck am I? What just happened? Oh, hey! Welcome to Flim Dog Woodwork. This is Brian. Today I'm coming to you from a remote location somewhere on the planet Earth. Now, as you know, Amazon.com delivers anywhere on the planet Earth. So we're going to take a look at seven items I just recently purchased from Amazon.com and I'll tell you whether or not they're worth it or not. So join me today as we take a look at these seven items. Whee! I tell you what, there's nothing that a full-blooded American redneck doesn't enjoy more than a good old-fashioned dip. But did you know there's a dip that you can use in your workshop that works really nice? Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I've got a lot of these F-clamps laying around my shop and I absolutely love them. They give you that really tight secure bond when you're gluing up your projects and you know that it's going to be secure. The one problem with these though, however, is there's a nice little pad that's on the end of these and these will fall off and you'll lose them all the time. But there's a solution for that. Let me show you what it is. So this pad is intended on giving you a little bit of protection as you're gluing up your work pieces. If you were just to rely on this metal piece right here, there's a good chance you're gonna scar up your workpiece and create a situation where you may not be able to sand it out. That's why I purchased this plastic dip. Now this provides a plastic coating on your metal that should give a little bit of protection as you're gluing up your work pieces. Let's test it out and see how it works. So in order to use a plastic dip, we wanna make sure that the clamp is fully extended. We also wanna open the clamp as far as it goes. Now, if we look inside the clamp, you can see it's just a plastic goo that's in a liquid form. Then we can take the clamp and dip it into the goo and pull it out. Now you can see that that head is fully coated and should harden up and provide the protection that we need. Now one thing we want to be careful with is we don't want to get the plastic dip on the threads of the clamp, so make sure that you don't go too far down. Now I've heard a lot of good things about this plastic dip, but I can't attest to the longevity of the hold between the plastic and the metal, so I'll keep you updated on that. If we take a closer look at the plastic dip, I can already tell that there's a little bit of metal showing through the plastic dip. Now it does say to wait 30 minutes and do as many layers as you need, so that's one thing to consider when using this product. Oh, oh, son of a, you ever have problems getting trapped between your wall and your plywood or having any problems getting plywood maneuvered around the shop or even in your big box stores? Well, this next thing is a perfect solution for that. So this is a product that I'm super excited about. This is a product that's very similar to a product called the Gator Grip, only this one's made by five peers and is about half the price. What it does is it clamps onto your plywood and it allows you to carry it with ease wherever you're going. So let's open the box and see how it works. So as we open the box, you can see that this product is pretty basic in its form. It's basically got two plates that have a rough coating on the inside that give clamping pressure to the workpiece. As you pull up on this lever, it secures the plywood inside those two jaws. Let me show you how it works. So here I've got a big dog piece of plywood. This is a four by eight sheet of plywood that's three quarters of an inch thick. Now what you do is you take your clamp and you place one side of each of these plates on either side of the plywood. You try to find the center region of the plywood so that it's equally balanced. Once you've got the jaws on either side, you pull up on the lever and you can easily lift the plywood and take it to wherever you want. Now the plywood is still very heavy, but it makes it a heck of a lot easier to get around. So here's a close up for how the mechanism works. As you place the clamp over your plywood, when you pull up on the lever, it provides a lot of clamping power on the opposite side. Then you can carry around your plywood wherever you need to go. Now one thing I'm a little bit concerned about is it does have a really abrasive surface on the inside, so it may scratch up your veneer. But with a little bit of sanding, you should be able to get that out. Now the next thing on our list is something that's an old school tool. How can we get back on the right track? Now do you remember that guy growing up that had the sweet stash and he used to build stuff in his shop that looked like all the tools came from the 17th century? Well, this thing would fit right in a shop, and that's this Bessie 12-inch wood screw clamp. Now, this thing has been around forever, and it's got a variety of uses. However, I'm gonna use this a little bit differently in my shop, and I'm gonna show you how this can be used in a modern shop on a regular basis. So this thing can really be a third hand. Let's say you're joining a couple of pieces of plywood together, and you need to set one piece of the plywood on end. 
you can simply slide it into the clamp and clamp it down and all of a sudden you got a piece of plywood that's set in the vertical position. Next up, let's say you have a really small piece of wood that you need to put a round over on. Instead of placing your fingers way too close to that router bit, you can simply place it into the clamp, tighten it down, and now you have a safe distance between that router bit and your hands. How about if you have to make a bunch of repeatable cuts at your miter saw? You can take the clamp and use it as a stop block. And as quick as that, you have an instant stop block. So really, the uses of this old school tool wooden screw clamp are limited only by your imaginations. You may have a few suggestions of your own. Leave them in the comments as I would love to see them. Ah, damn it. I just messed up another beautiful cabinet door. Now this happens to me all the time. I'll create a beautiful project, it's in its finishing stages, and then I'll put something like hinges on it and I screw the whole thing up. There's nothing more frustrating than that. Now this next item helps alleviate a lot of that, so let's take a look. So this is what I'm talking about. See how those screws are sitting proud of the actual hinge? Well, they're supposed to sit flush, and that's because I didn't align the actual holes in the wood with the holes of the hinge. And this next tool will help fix that. So this is what I bought. It's a set of seven self-centering drill bits from Qwork Tools. Let's test it out on our hinge and see if we can get those screw heads to sit flush with the actual hinge. So the way that this works is that each drill bit is forced into the center of the hinge hole. As you push it through, it creates a perfect pilot hole for your screw. Once you have a perfect pilot hole for your screw, that screw will sit completely flush with your actual hinge. So now let's test it out and see if it works. So as a reminder, here's a look at our first set of screws that I did freehand. And if we look at the screws that we did with the center hole finder, you can see that those screws are completely flush with the hinge, which is what I was looking for. So I'm absolutely over my roundovers. I have them scattered throughout my router table, and I never know exactly which one is which. Let me show you what I'm dealing with. So don't laugh, but this is my router bit holder for the moment. All my bits are scattered around, and I'm never quite sure which one is which. That's why I got this next tool. Let me show you what it is. So this is what I bought. It's a roundover bit set made by Unico Router Bits. Now I've purchased a few bits from Unico before and I've never been disappointed. They seem to hold up and they do exactly what I want them to. So let's get in this box and see what's inside. So as I've said before, I've purchased Unico Router Bits before. They always come in a nice wooden case that gives you a safe storage location for them so you won't lose them all the time. Now these are dado router bits for plywood, which I featured in a previous video. But let's get into these roundover bits and see what's inside. So once again, it's a nice wooden packaging to store your bits. Inside, you'll see there's a variety of bits going from anywhere from an eighth of an inch all the way up to a half inch roundover, which is exactly what I need. So as we take a closer look at the roundover bit set, you can see that the packaging is extremely nice. Along with the actual router bits comes an Allen wrench with an extra bearing. It's extremely nice to have anything from an eighth of an inch all the way up to a half inch roundover bit. That way you have exactly what you need for the workpiece you're working on. So I did want to mention that these router bits come in two different shank size. They come in the quarter inch shank as well as the half inch shank. Now I'm currently migrating to the half inch shank, but if you use a quarter inch shank, these will work just as well. So are you one of those weirdos that thinks a screw head's sexy? Well, that's not me, and that's why I purchased this next item. Let's take a look at it. All right, let's talk countersink bits for a bit. Now I've got a variety of countersink bits in my inventory, and I've got everything from this DeWalt countersink bit all the way up to this other bit that I got on Amazon.com. Now the one thing that I don't like about the DeWalt countersink bit is it doesn't give you a whole lot of control when you're drilling into your workpiece. Therefore, you can create countersinks that are just way too deep. Now the nice thing about this one that I got on Amazon is it's got a break, so it prevents you from going way too far into your workpiece. So this next item that I purchased is something that I'll actually put in my drill press, and that's these Irwin countersink bits. Now the reason I purchased these is they provide a little bit more control when you're drilling into your workpiece. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So the countersink bits that I'm used to are mainly used for my hand drill, and that's why I wanted to get this countersink bit, because I think it's more suited for the drill press. Let me show you what I mean. So the nice thing about these bits is that when they're placed in the drill press, you have a lot of control of how deep you go with the actual countersink. 
with no adjustments to the actual bit itself. You can go extremely deep or very shallow. It just depends on what you're looking for in your workpiece. So this countersink drill bit set by Irwin comes with five different bits. It comes with a quarter inch bit, a three eighths inch bit, a half inch bit, a five eighths inch bit, and lastly, a three quarter inch bit. So depending on your screw head, it can accommodate a variety of different types of screws. <laughs> that was my impression of a horse. I absolutely love horses. I love to pet them, I love to comb them, I love to eat them, I love to ride them, but I just found a new use for a horse in my shop. So let's go take a look. So this item you may think is completely lame, but I think it's gonna get a lot of use in my shop. And that's because I always produce a lot of sawdust and I don't always have time to reach for my vacuum to clean it up. That's simply the horse hair brush. Let me show you how I'm gonna use it. So the nice thing about having a shop brush is it's just quick and easy. Boom, gone, boom, gone, boom, gone, boom, gone. And it's as clean as ever. Boom, gone, boom, gone, boom, gone. Boom, gone, boom, gone. So I hope you enjoyed these seven items from amazon.com that I think will improve any shop. I really enjoyed showing them to you. I'll leave links in the description for all of the items that we talked about in the description below. So check those out if you're interested in purchasing one. Until I see you next time, take care. Well, thanks for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed these seven must-have items for your workshop. I really enjoyed showing them to you and I think they'll be a valuable asset to your workshop. If you get a chance, I'd love to get your subscription and leave a like. Also hit that notification bell so you can be informed when future videos come out. We'll see you again next time and take care as always.